good. We're recording. Greetings. Welcome to the IPFS community call for the week of uh, second, the second, second December. Is that I want to say it in UK appropriate fashion <laughs> because that's the majority of our of our uh, so far of our crew today, and we uh, I especially want to thank our guest Nick uh, Poulden who has graciously. Uh, agreed to, uh, to to talk about uh, origin, what he's he's been doing with with that organization, uh, and thanks so much, Nick, for for stepping in at the last minute. Sure. Um, we have uh, next week. Now we'll be hearing from Arkady, who is uh, on, on the uh, a, a long time contributor to IPFS, and was slated to talk today about ETH DNS. Uh, Ethereum DNS technology that he's been deeply involved with, but he has taken ill, sadly. Uh, but it's super exciting to to hear from from you, Nick. I know there, there's been uh, we saw there's a Medium article, which uh, does someone does, which, do we have someone to take notes? Thank you. Two times you've helped me already, Ollie. So. Uh, that's it. Let me link to the that's notes. That's <laughs> you can do this all you can. <laughs> there is, uh, there's the notes doc. Uh, but yeah, uh, we saw the uh, the Medium article about Origins uh, Shopify alternative mm. store recently, and, and there's already been a lot of excitement about that. So uh, please, uh, if you could give us the nickel tour and feel free yeah. to, to share the screen if, you, if you'd like. Uh, yeah. Um, let me have a look, how do I? All right. Oh no, I have to allow Zoom to, hold on two seconds. I guess there's a bunch of new security settings that I haven't enabled yet. I'm, I'm gonna have to rejoin because I have to, uh, allow this thing. I'll be back in a sec. I used to constantly have that problem of not being signed in and then not being able to record, but it seems like Zoom has improved on that a little bit, where now I can sign in while within a call and then my recording options just materialize. It's great. All right. Are you able to see this now? Yes. Thank you. Ah, great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so just a, a little bit of background. Um, Origin is um, trying to build uh, decentralized marketplaces, um, connecting buyers with sellers, um, trying to cut out the middleman essentially, and using um, Ethereum and IPFS um, to. to basically using IPFS as the, the data layer and using Ethereum to kind of store those IPFS hashes so that um, the idea being that the only two um, uh, dependencies for to, to run one of these stores are IPFS and Ethereum essentially. So you wouldn't need um, any other, uh, anything else in order to connect to one of these stores and, and purchase something. Um, and so, you can see that um, the, the site that I'm on right now, originswag.eth.link, that is a, um, this is an ENS domain. Um, and I, I don't know if you're aware, but basically if you append uh, .link onto the end of any ENS domain name um, and, and it's pointing at an IPFS hash, then it's gonna actually serve um, whatever is kind of at that IPFS hash uh, just over the, the regular web. Um, which is really convenient. But if I was to go to uh, originswag.eth uh, and just put a slash at the end of that, because I have the, the MetaMask extension, um, it's going to forward me directly to that IPFS hash here um, and hopefully load up all of this stuff. Um, so right now I'm using a pinata in order to kind of pin all of this stuff. Um, and, and essentially, 
what, what I've done is that this store is built, it's, it's basically a, a static website. So all of the, the code um, for this is um, running in the client. Um, so things like search, for example, if I was to type uh, unicorn in here, this is, this is actually a, a client side search. So, so it's, it's looked at all the titles of, of all the products and because there's only a hundred products or so, um, we're able to do that client side. Obviously, if you're storing millions of products and it might be a, a little bit more difficult. Um, but the, the whole store here is, the, is, is, uh, is working in the client side. It's all built with, um, react JS. Um, and so maybe I could just do a quick kind of demo of, of, uh, the purchase flow here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and buy uh, an origin sticker because it's only $2. Um, so I can go ahead and add that to my cart. I can see that the cart up here is updated. Um, I can look at my cart so I can modify the quantity. Um, subtotal down here is going to get, um, updated. I can then go to the checkout and this is going to, um, load up, um, the, the kind of, uh, origin GraphQL package, which is the thing that basically connects to, um, to Ethereum and, and can query and, and, uh, make, uh, blockchain transactions here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the network tab as well. So we can actually see kind of what's going on in here. Um, oh, that's a point actually, if I, if I just go back to the main page again, and just refresh this, um, then you can see that basically every single thing that's um, on this page is being loaded directly off uh, IPFS.io. Uh, so that's including all of the images and media and, and all that stuff. Um, and if I actually have a look at this, this URL here, this is actually where all the data is uh, stored here. So I can actually see what the, um, the kind of database looks like, if, if you will. Um, it's, it's essentially all of the different, uh, products live in, in these different directories. So if I was to have a look in here, um, I can see that we have a, a data.json object, um, and that contains things like the title and description price, uh, all of the variants for the, you know, if you, if you want a small or a medium or a large, all of that stuff. Um, so you have a, a data object and then you have these directories that contain the, um, the images. Um, so this is just, you know, the, the different, uh, colors and sizes and things for all the different products there. Um, so you have a, a subdirectory for each product and then you have this, um, uh, products.json here, which is kind of, uh, is, is what we use for the, for the actual listings. So we can see, um, the title and all of the, uh, directory names here and also what the, the kind of primary image is for that. Um, so this is what's used to actually render, um, the main index page here. Um, and then we also have some other kind of meta data, for example, this shipping.json file contains, um, the different shipping options. So we actually have free shipping for all of these. So, you, um, the, the amount here is, is zero for both international and, and domestic shipping. But if you had, you know, different shipping rates for different countries, for example, then you could and put them in into that uh, shipping.json file. Um, so that's kind of how we're using, um, you know, how we're, how the data is kind of structured and, and stored in, in IPFS. Um, and essentially what, what we do is we kind of put all of it into a directory, um, including the, um, so actually maybe I can just show you what that looks like. Um, so ba basically we're gonna upload this whole public directory and that contains uh, all of the built JavaScript files, um, as well as the, this, this is this directory here, this origin directory that contains all of the, um, the database. And then, um, you know, we have all of the different, uh, the JavaScript files and, and all that stuff um, goes into, into this directory. So, and, and then what we do is we upload this entire directory. Um, so right, right now we're using Pinata to do that. Um, so they have, I, mean, I haven't actually looked into the, um, protocol labs version. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have a, a version of this, um, would be happy to use it if you did. Um, but essentially they, they have a, um, an, a directory upload thing. So we'll just upload that entire directory. Um, and then it's going to give us the, the IPFS hash here. 
Um, so if I have, go to that IPFS hash, um, it's gonna give me that store. Um, and then you can also see some other stores I've made here. So um, it turns out that um, the Ethereum Foundation use uh, Shopify. Um, and so basically what I did was I built a, a Shopify um, importer. So it's gonna go and scrape uh, the Shopify store for all of the, um, the product information and the images, and then put it into this kind of IPFS format so that it's very easy for someone who already has um, a shop to um, move over to, to this platform, the IPFS uh, Ethereum platform here. So I did that for Ethereum and I also did it for um, Gitcoin. Turns out that Gitcoin also have a, uh, a Shopify store. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the, the kind of process for, for building. That's what the, the database and uh, the application code look like. Um, so now if I just go back to the, uh, the checkout process, um, let's just see if I still have that. Oh yeah, here we go. So I've got my cart with my sticker in it. Um, I'm gonna go to the checkout and then I'm going to uh, fill out my information here, just a fake address here. Um, got my shipping options here. Uh, and again, this is all hosted off um, using that same application logic. And then I have two options. I can either use a credit card um, and this is obviously going to contact a, a centralized server if I want to use a credit card, but um, that credit card uh, server can be run by any individual. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to rely on um, a given, you know, organization to, to run this credit card server. So I could run this myself. Um, if you set up your own store, you could run your own uh, credit card processing backend. So in that way, it's kind of maintains the, the decentralized piece um, where you don't have to rely on um, on a company or, or organization to, to run your um, run your store. Um, but for right now, we're going to use uh, cryptocurrency. So I've got two options here. I can either pay with DAI uh, or I can pay with ETH. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pay with ETH for now. Um, and if I just have a look at my network here. Um, you can see what's actually happened. So I've got my, my MetaMask notification over here, but I just wanted to show you what's going on um, in IPFS. So, so right now we're using um, the origin IPFS server to actually pin this um, JSON file that we're uploading. And this is, this is basically containing a um, PGP encrypted uh, JSON object. Um, that contains my shipping information, my um, address and my, my email address, because obviously I don't want that information to be um, posted publicly. Um, so, so basically I've, I've encrypted it with um, via PGP and this is using the public key um, of the seller. Um, so in, in this case, it's using Origin's uh, public PGP key. So the only Origin can decrypt this data, um, which obviously they need in order to fulfill the order. Um, so, and, and what I've actually done is I've encrypted this twice. So um, the first one is, is so that it's readable by origin. And then the second one, um, the same data is actually encrypted with um, a random um, string of, uh, basically a, a random password uh, and a, a, get to that in a minute but essentially it's so that the so that i can read my data if i want to come back and check on the status of my order um then i've basically created myself a um a, a way to to read that data um so by the way does anyone have any questions am i, am I still online here <laughs> yeah this is very okay cool. great um so yeah so the the, the checkout information has been encrypted with PGP and, and pinned. And then the, the hash, the resulting hash of that is then, um, is then uh, put into a, another JSON object. And, and, and this is what's kind of used for, this is like the, the or, an official origin offer, essentially. So this is um, another JSON object that has some data about, um, you know, the, the offer that I'm making. So it's essentially the, the way that the origin um, smart contract works um, 
is that you know if you, if you if you're a buyer and you're buying something from someone with cryptocurrency um obviously there's there's no way for you to get that money back um if the seller doesn't um fulfill their obligations if they you know if they just if they have the money then why would they bother sending you the, the product right if they were if they wanted to they, they wouldn't have to to do that so essentially the the origin smart contract um works as a kind of escrow system so essentially when you when you make an offer um what you're doing is you're sending uh, the um the ipfs hash along with a payment so that the ipfs hash kind of represents your um your order and then you you also send along the, the payment um in either uh, eth or DAI or whatever other erc20 token you have um you send that to the smart contract and then um that those funds are then held in escrow until the seller um kind of fulfills the order so essentially there's there's a, a few steps um the buyer will make an offer the seller will then accept that offer um and at that point they're, they're kind of under contract if you will um and then it's up to um the seller to actually send the goods and then the buyer will then finalize the offer and, that, and by finalizing the offer they will that will essentially release the funds to the seller so that the buyer is saying you know i got my goods everything's okay um and then the, the buyer will then release the funds uh or there's also another mechanism um which is uh, essentially there's a there's a timeout window um so there's there's a window of time you probably set it to maybe um two weeks after the buyer is expected to to receive delivery and if the buyer still hasn't um kind of finalized the offer by that two week period then the seller can kind of take the money. Um, so that just kind of protects from unresponsive buyers. Um, and, and equally, uh, if, if the seller is unresponsive, so if the seller does not accept the offer, um, the buyer can also withdraw their offer. So that, that just kind of protects against, um, you know, if, if you make an offer on something and then the seller doesn't respond because they lost their private key or, you know, they just disappeared, uh, the seller can get their money back. Um, so the the only other uh, case is when so the the seller doesn't get their goods and then the buyer um says that they sent the goods then um either the the buyer or the seller can initiate a dispute in which case um a third party arbitrator will kind of make a decision about who um you know if if the buyer should get a refund or or not essentially um and that arbitrator is picked it's a, it's a mutually agreed arbitrator so it doesn't have to be um again like uh, a, a particular um individual organization that the buyer and seller kind of choose who that arbitrator is um when the buyer is making the offer essentially so that's just a really quick rundown of how, how the smart contract works um so now let, let me go ahead and confirm this um so again this this offer um consists of the IPFS hash. Um, so if I actually look at the data here, um, well, this isn't that helpful, but um, essentially it's, it's going to contain the, the IPFS hash of, of my offer um, that has all my, my details in it and also the actual payment in ETH. So I'll go ahead and, and confirm that. Um, and that is going to go ahead and mine that transaction um, on the blockchain. And um, and then what we have is uh, in the back in the back end here. Th this is that process that this is the, the payment processor that I was telling you about that this, the seller runs on there. Um, so this is actually just a, an application that's being deployed to, to Heroku right now. And what this is doing is watching the blockchain um, for transactions um, that happen on my uh, on my store essentially. Um, so as soon as this transaction gets mined if it, if it gets mined really know what's going on here yeah it's pending so i don't know how long this is going to take this is like <laughs> one of the drawbacks of using uh ethereum and, and some sometimes i think is that it can take a little bit of time um but essentially this this uh back-end process here is uh watching the blockchain for those events um those offer events and you can see that it's actually it's seen the event now um, and what it's done is it's um, 
it's downloaded that PGP data, so uh, off, off the IPFS server. Um, because this backend process has the PGP private key, it's able to decrypt that information, uh, which you can see here. So this is my email address and, uh, and all that stuff. Um, and then it's actually sent out a confirmation email. Um, so if I go and check my email here, then you can see, um, because I'm both the buyer and the seller, I got all the different emails here. Um, so this is the, the email that the seller would get, um, you know, where you know someone placed an order on your store, you can have a look at the information there. And then as the buyer, this is the email that I get as a buyer. Um, and if I actually go ahead and view that order, um, it's going to give me my confirmation screen here. And it's got my order number, and this is like the um, the number on the smart contract. Um, and you can also see that that up here is that if you remember when I, I mentioned that we encrypted um, the PGP data twice. Uh, so this is the password um, for the the kind of second um, blob of data. So th this basically enables, so th this is the um, transaction hash, uh, the Ethereum transaction hash. Um, so if I go to Etherscan and actually paste that in, um, then I can see that $2 worth of Ether was transferred. Um, and I can look at the, um, the event logs here. And this, and this here is the, uh, the IPFS hash that contains the, um, all, all of the, the offer data there. Um, so, so yeah, and, and then this is the, uh, the password that lets me decrypt so that I can actually view my, my name and address and all that. So if I actually like add one, two, three to the end of that, uh, then it's not, gonna, it's not gonna work because that's an incorrect password now. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically um, a demonstration of the, of, of how all this stuff works. Um, so, you know, I, I think that the, the cool thing about it is that it's, it's only using IPFS and Ethereum. Um, and also, you know, that the, the idea of this is that, um, you know, origin is, um, the, the idea of origin is that it's, you, you can think of it as like a, an open, um, an open protocol. So, you know, anyone is able to add a store or a listing um, onto the origin smart contracts, and then anyone else can um, make offers to, to those listings. And so, um, you know, whereas if, if you look at something like Shopify, for example, um, you know, Shopify have an app store, um, everyone who's building apps on top of Shopify is kind of beholden to Shopify. Um, you know, if, if you want to do something that is that Shopify don't like, then they can shut you down. They can um, they can ban you from the app store. Um, they have a lot of power, um, and they also have a lot of data. So um, you know, all of those transactions that are going through Shopify, like Shopify can um, can see all of that data and and um, you know do whatever they want with it essentially. Whereas if you build on a an open platform. Um, uh, where there are no dependencies, then you can be sure that your application is never going to um, break, um, and you don't need to worry about, you know, uh, an organization or, or corporation taking control or denying you access or telling you what you can and can't do, uh, what you can sell, what you can't sell. Um, uh, all of this uh, code for this is is open source, so you can um, go in and change anything you want. Um, and I really think that that's the, the power of these kind of uh, decentralized protocols is that people are able to build tools on top of the protocol um, and have a guarantee that no one is going to come along and, and, you know, change the rules or, um, or just uh, say that they, they can't do it anymore. I don't know if you guys remember when Twitter originally had their API and lots of people built tools on top of the Twitter API and then Twitter decided that actually um, they were going to shut that API down, uh, and all of those people were just kind of, um, you know, it was just tough luck, basically. Um, so building on an open protocol like this, um, you, you don't have to worry about uh, anyone uh, telling you no. Uh, and so I think that's the, the difference between, um, you know, and, and the reason that I think that these open protocols are going to, um, you know, stand the test of time, hopefully.
Um, so yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, yep. You guys have any questions? Thanks so much, Nick. Can I ask you to stop sharing your screen so that we could uh, sure. see you? Are you going? I, I, I think Johnny Crunch has a, a question. Yeah, I think just uh, one concern is um, the data.json file is actually in the browser because it's decentralized. Are you doing any external validation or Oracle validation in, tra in the transaction? Because it seems like I can manipulate or edit that the value, let's say the $2 to be two cents, and no one would be the wiser to, um, to, to, for that transaction. Yeah, so, um, so I guess there's, there's a few things. There's, um, <clears throat> you know, it would be very easy for me to like clone this store and then change the recipient to, to just be, you know, my contract instead of the origin contract. And then people might think that they're, they're making a, a, a transaction um, on the origin contract, whereas they're not. Um, people are just kind of stealing their money. So I think that um, for that one, you, it's the same with, with any kind of phishing website or um, where you, you go to a URL that you trust. Um, and, you know, so, so that there is still some, some trust around, around the URL, or I guess, you know, the, the ENS domain name. Um, and then the, the other one is, um, yeah, from, from the, if you're the, if you're the buyer trying to take advantage of the seller by, um, you know, uh, changing it to two cents instead of $2, then, from the, the seller's perspective, they would um, they would just reject the offer unless um, all of the validation checks pass. So they you know they can they can inspect the the smart contract to make sure that the correct amount of currency has been transferred um, and that all of the uh, the offer details are kind of in order. Um, so that that's a kind of uh, a check that they would do on their end before actually accepting that offer um, and and fulfilling it. I think my only other comment would be the decryption key in the as a query fragment. I'm sorry, a query parameter. If you actually yeah. use the fragment, a hash fragment, that actually is only parsed by the the browser and not sent to the server. Yeah. So I know. I know. Uh, Juan had, had created a um, an encryption of data over IPFS, and it's overloading the use of of a hash fragment. But it's a clever sort of trick to keep it out um, so the server doesn't actually use it because browsers actually don't parse or send the hash a hash fragment whereas the query parameters they do yeah yeah that is a um a useful property um and so yeah we're, we're using that same property here um so that you know if, if someone's trying to load something off a, a uh, an ipfs gateway that whether that they don't necessarily trust then um then that information isn't going to be passed to that server um which could be an issue if you for example were storing stuff in a in a cookie yeah, but I think using a hash for the hash fragment rather than a query parameter. A query parameter. Oh, wait, so, so it's actually a, a query parameter inside a hash fragment. So it is. So that query parameter is part of the the hash fragment. Oh, that's really cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Good job, then. I, I we are almost at time. Um, I think this topic is like rife with. <laughs> a lot of questions. My my question would be: I want to set up one of these stores. What do I do? Where do I go? Um, so right now, it's just a kind of um, the the front end is done and a, a basic back end is done, um, and we're working on um, kind of like a, a Shopify import tool, um, but it's not ready. It's you can't just set one up from scratch unless you want to play with JSON objects and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, currently working on a, a backend to uh, make a nice UX um, for doing that. And I think that's probably gonna involve a lot more um, deep dive into IPFS and, and um, because hopefully when you're making changes in the backend, it's actually gonna make those changes directly to IPFS. So I need to kind of uh, do a bunch of exploration around, you know, adding files to, to directories and, and um, uploading the new hash um and all that stuff so, so that's going to be fun to to explore that awesome wow well we will uh certainly be watching and i think we might have to loop you back in mm. and, uh, as, as all this develops but thanks so much uh nick for swinging by like to com commend yeah. you on the thank level you. of polish ah, your shop your shop looked very shiny yeah. yes <laughs> you don't always see that
No, no, it's uh, I, I basically copied Shopify, so I had something to um, <laughs> to reference. Homage. Thank you. All, all great artists. <laughs> <laughs> but clearly, it's 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 deeply thought out. So, uh, on behalf of the community, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, uh, yeah, we'll all, we'll see y'all uh, next week. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.